I experimented with a few different ones before I got to this one. At a few points, I thought I found the right one, only for it to turn out to be quite the opposite. I probably wasted way too much money along the way, but I didn't really know any better. But when I got to this one, it only took a day before I knew it was the right one for me, for good. This is the story about how I met my fiance- uh, No, wait, no. This is my Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 review. This video is brought to you by Green Man Gaming. GMG is a unique game store that is jam-packed full of great deals and sales and even lets you trade in your old games towards new game purchases. Click the screen to sign up and get $2 free towards your next game purchase. Relationship jokes aside, the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 has been a godsend for my studio. The interface takes two XLR or line in inputs and outputs them to, well, two, either left and right track audio via USB or line out, or to two separate mono tracks via USB. It requires no external power other than that USB A to B cable, and yet can provide a strong 48 volt phantom power as well as power a pair of monitoring headphones. Did I mention that it's really small too? The 48 volt phantom power can be turned off with the push of a button. You have volume control knobs for the direct microphone monitoring or the headphone audio playback via the USB ASIO driver. And you can even turn off direct headphone monitoring. That way you only hear what's being played back from your computer or you can turn it on to hear what's coming through your microphone. The Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 is made very nicely out of a brushed aluminum looking red or scarlet metal has four rubber known slip feet on the bottom and has a Kensington lock port on the back for where security is key, pun intended. Don't let me forget about the audio quality itself. This interface provides an extremely clean and high quality audio stream from the interface to your computer via USB. We use it in a co-op recording studio in which we have two separate mics that we need to balance individually and process individually and this works perfectly for it. It's extremely flexible in that it allows you to either output left and right stereo tracks with the individual microphones or separate mono streams. We typically run with the left and right stereo tracks, export them to mono streams, and then mix them back together as that provides a bit more compatible option for various software to work with for our recording. For this setup, we use a Rode Procaster dynamic microphone as well as a Behringer C-1 condenser microphone and the interface has no problem providing the 48 volt phantom power to just the condenser microphone and not causing any trouble with my dynamic microphone. I am and when I'm recording solo I can simply turn off the phantom power and record my single mic as a mono stream without ever having to worry about other sounds coming in the other microphone because the phantom power is turned off and therefore the condenser microphone doesn't have enough power to actually pick up any audio. That's really convenient for me, though that's not necessarily going to apply to everyone's setup. And when we upgrade that second microphone to a dynamic, that will no longer be the case. The second output by a line out is also very clean and high quality. This has been one of the biggest issues I've run into with mixers in our setup so far, is that running a secondary output to a, our second recording rig either involves us using multiple ground loop isolators at various points along the setup to eliminate electrical noise and interference from basically having two computers hooked up together or it's just been way too noisy and just too crappy of an output to actually use effectively. This one works perfectly, we can reuse our second rig as if it were our main recording rig without really ever noticing any difference. The left and right still are set to separate microphones and it's pretty high quality. There is a tiny bit of extra noise in it on that side I've noticed when recording on the second computer, but honestly I think that may be coming from the condenser microphone since it picks up more than the dynamic rather than from the interface itself. This interface has virtually no circuit noise, which is frankly quite amazing. The other mixers that I've used, pretty much all of them have their own noise of some sort. Literally, you could have everything muted and there's still electrical hissing and noise going back in the Behringer ones I've used before and things like that. So. This is amazing. So what's not to love about this interface? Well, honestly not a whole lot. Depending on which 3.5mm to 1 4 inch adapter I use for my monitoring headphones in here and which angle I put it in, it can feel quite loose. However, I've never really noticed this to cause any sort of impact on the sound quality that I'm hearing or cause any internal audio glitches that can be detected in recordings or anything like that. So it's just a matter of making sure you put it in straight and don't pull on it too much, which kind of you have to do with any audio jacks anyway. My dynamic microphone requires the gains to be set pretty high. It's set about the 90% mark 
just to be picked up at normal volume levels on the recording. And even with that set there, I have the mo when I have the monitoring knob for the headphone monitoring, monitoring of the microphone set up to literally 100%, it's still very, very hard to hear either of the microphones through the monitoring. I, like I said, I have it turned up 100%, I have the gain set at appropriate levels for recording, and I, with both of us talking in both microphones, it's still pretty hard to hear the playback. That's not something you necessarily need, because 90% of the recording we do, we either need to be able to hear each other, or hear something on the screen more than ourselves. However, it makes it kind of frustrating when you're trying to hear yourself play back, and it's a little too quiet. Also, the driver for this interface can be kind of wonky and isn't compatible with all software. I've not run into any deal breaking issues with that just yet, however, as I've made it work with pretty much everything I need to do. We use Adobe Audition for our standard commentary, voiceover, that kind of thing, recording, and a game software called DX Story for Game Capture, and it works fine with both of those as long as we set it to do stereo output instead of dual mono output. However, your, your results may vary on that. It is an ASIO driver, which means you have to have it set as the default input and output for using an Adobe Audition. So if I'm trying to edit audio in Adobe Audition while using audio in Premiere Pro, um, which may be go that's going to a separate output, I keep having to switch headsets to go between the audio and the video editing, which can be kind of frustrating. However, this works really well as a an external DAC if you just if you don't have an external DAC for your headphones. You can use it as an external DAC and amp for listening to audio. So if you set it as your default device just to begin with and use it as your primary output, it should work fine for you. Overall, the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 is an amazing audio interface. It It's affordable, it's small, it's compact, it could be portable, all it requires is USB power, and it provides amazing audio quality. I'd all but given up on getting clean audio from my setup until I found this. And frankly, the best part about this is I can set this on my desk out of the way and just have it within arm's reach, unlike the giant table-sized Behringer mixer I was using previously. When considering if this audio interface is for you, consider whether or not you need two XLR and line-in inputs mixed down to separate audio tracks. If you just need a single one, the Focusrite iTrack Solo would probably be a better interface for you. A review on that coming soon, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that review. Um, but if you need two or less inputs, this is a very, very good interface. However, if you need more inputs, you will obviously need a bigger interface. Thanks so much for watching my review. Please leave a like or dislike based on how you feel and leave a comment telling us why. Check the description for support links on how you can help us out by contributing monthly to a Patreon campaign, checking out our sponsors, things like that. Otherwise, I will catch you in a future video. Like I said, the Focusrite iTrack solo review coming soon as well, which is this lovely silver one over here. And otherwise, guys, I'll catch you in the next video. My name has been Adam or Epos Box. Bye. -bye.